first time I ever did stand up was in my high school uh, in Mississauga, Clarkson Secondary School. They were having a talent night. And uh, everybody said, Sean, you gotta do stand up comedy. You gotta try it. And my English teacher at the time, she was the biggest proponent. She's like, Sean, you have to follow something that you're passionate about in your life. You've got to go up there and you've got to be brave and you can't let anybody tell you otherwise. And this talent thing that's happening on Friday night in the cafeteria, you should definitely do it. Just be brave and you go. And it was inspiring. This was in the cafeteria of my high school. There were maybe 20 people in this giant building room with, you know, and I get up on stage and I start talking about Sesame Street or something that I thought was funny. Anyway, everybody is just like, this is terrible. What is he doing? Like I was silence. And the teacher who was so inspiring to me in English class earlier in the week, literally looked at me while I was on stage. I was like sweating. I was nervous. And <laughs> I looked down and I'll never forget it. She was like, She's telling, she's giving me the hook. She's like, thumbs down, like the gladiator. Kill him. Kill. I'm like, you're, inspi you're supposed to be inspiring me to take a chance. And now she's like, I'm five minutes into my 10 minutes. I mean, sure, it was horrible. <laughs> That's not how the movie goes. The movie's supposed to be, she's like. No, she's like, yeah, get this. Who is this guy? Get this guy off stage. There's never a break. There is a moment. And the moments are amazing. And you learn pretty quickly uh, that, you know, this is a beautiful boost, but a full career, a life is not that moment. So I've had several really great things that have happened along the way that have helped me get momentum. I remember one of the first things when I first started doing stand-up comedy, um, I remember going to Just For Laughs. You know, you work so hard to get Just For Laughs. Just For Laughs is truly one of the most important comedy festivals on the planet. But I remember winning that night, and I remember um, there were executives there from CBS, and they gave me what was called a holding deal. So they wanted to lock me down for a holding deal. And that means, from a talent perspective, from a casting perspective, they want to have exclusive rights to you for a pilot season so that, you know, only you audition for CBS. And I was like, a holding deal. I've made it. I've won. <laughs> that was one big break, but that got me into Los Angeles. And I was able to come down here and do pilot season. And I even got booked uh, on a pilot the next next year. I was working with Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, she had a she had a new show, and it was a sketch comedy show. It was with Tim Conway, myself, Sean Cullen, uh, Jen Irwin. And two or three days into the week we were actually shooting, I get fired. And that was like such a great example of putting things into perspective because Jen Irwin, who I, you know, started with the Second City, she said to me the next day, she said, Sean, I just wanna let you know, uh, we went to the table read the day after you got fired. Tim Conway, comedy legend, turns to Jen Irwin and says, where's Sean, what happened? He's not here at the table read? And Jen said, yeah, no, I think, I think they let him go. And uh, Tim Conway's like, this makes no sense. And then he said to Jen, he said, well, you tell Sean that I've been fired in this industry 20 times and you haven't done anything until you've been fired <laughs> uh, from a TV show. And that was a great lesson. It put things in perspective because I thought that was it. I thought it was over. I'm packing up. I'm going back to Mississauga. I'm going to live with my dad in the suburbs and go to Miracle Food Mart and get apples and live the rest of my life that way. I feel like from a stand-up comedy perspective, Toronto is a heaven uh, in many, many ways. Toronto has such a great comedy scene. 
Um, and I can only speak to Toronto because that's that's kind of where I cut my teeth as a stand-up to begin and still uh, have a lot of teeth to cut. But, but I feel like Toronto was such a great place where not only did you have you know, your chain of comedy clubs in, uh, across the country with Yuck Yucks, which is where I started. Um, but you also have these great rooms. You've got now the comedy bar, you've got, you know, the Rivoli for me was my favorite place to do stand up because it kind of promoted this thing of like, you know, the alt Monday nights were a place where you could go and try ridiculous things. And people were there to hear that and they were there to allow you to explore. They were a very forgiving audience. And I feel like Toronto, I love that. I didn't know those rooms are here um, in LA, but LA is a different world uh, in terms of stand-up audiences, I feel like. You might be doing stand-up in a little back room and there may be somebody in the audience there may be a great opportunity here. That is always a potential here, but also you don't want to let that be the reason why, you know, you 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 write your material with the hopes of someone seeing it versus a pure stand-up who wants to just do the things that they feel is really funny and do the, you know what I mean? But then you have the the alt rooms that are all over the city that are really tough to get on, but that's probably the places where you're gonna see the best comedy, you know?